we're going to do is we're going to use plants like grass and foliage and we're going to decorate this ground plane but what we want to do is leave this path open so that our plants and grass don't cover the path. Now currently if I render this you'll see that I have a blend material which we covered in a previous tutorial so that my path right through here has a different material on it than the rest of my object. Also, this object has been paint deformed, so these um, heightened areas here have been raised using paint deform. And I've subtracted these areas using paint deform as well. So, using scatter, scatter is kind of a tricky little compound object. And what we need to do is we need to make a couple different ground planes so the different scatter objects have something to get a hold of. Now there's a lot of ways to do a scatter object. There's plenty of tutorials on the internet. Some of them use volume select. Some of them use vertex painting. Uh, the way I like to do it is to use various ground objects, collapse them all later, and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll merge the vertices. But you can use those different ways of doing it if you'd like to. I think in the long run you, you get pretty much the same thing. So I'll show you the way that I do it. And this object here is called base plane don't delete. We're not going to delete anything from this base plane. This one will always be there. But we need to make a couple new copies. So I'm going to hit uh, right click and go to clone. And I'm going to make a copy, not an instance. We don't want an instance in this case. And now we're going to call this one uh, path delete a one. And now I'm going to um, I could have left that selected, but I'll go to path delete a one. That's the one that I'm going to use. And I'm going to isolate this so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better here. I'm going to rotate this around so I can see the top of it. Remember, our path goes right through here. And I'm going to go to Polygon. And my selection type, I'm going to use this guy, which is going to allow me to draw in a selection. And now I'm going to select Polygons, and I'm just going to select kind of right around where the path would be. There's a lot of polygons in this object. You're going to need a lot of polygons any time that you use um, uh, the paint deformations. That's the main reason. And now we're just going to delete those. And now we've deleted the path. So when we use this as a scatter object, our objects can only go where we've allowed them to go. Now, I'm going to make a clone of this. So I'm going to right click here and hit clone. And I'm going to say copy. This next one is going to be called 3. So path delete 3. You'll see that I have it selected there. And I'm going to do the same thing on path delete 3, but I'm going to delete more areas. So my grass can kind of fade in where the, um, the path meets these rocky areas. So I'll have kind of another layer of foliage that kind of creeps and crawls next to the path here. So it's going to select those polygons, and I'm going to delete those. Now you're seeing the, um, the one underneath it, the path delete 2 is underneath there. So what I'm going to do now is get out of isolation mode, and let's take a look at all of these pieces that we have here so you, st you can see what we just did. Now the base plane, this guy, let's select that one. Take a look at this. This is the plane that will not be um, changed. And you can see it hasn't changed at all. We want that. The next one was the path delete one. And you can see that it's got a piece missing out of it there. And the path delete, well, I guess I did three. How about if we call that two? That makes a little more sense. Sorry about that. Path delete two, which I now have selected. Oops. Get out of that mode. There we go. Path delete two, 
has more area deselected from it or deleted. So, they're all piled right on top of each other, and it's important that they actually share exactly the same space so that when we merge all this stuff together, we can just delete the vertices later on using um, target weld. Okay, now we got to dig around in here a little bit. You'll also notice, I'll render this real quick so that you can see that all of them have the same material applied to them because they were clones of each other. Okay? All right. So, we're going to go and select... No, we're not. First, we're going to select a plant. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to select one of these grass plants. Now, a couple things about the objects we're going to scatter. The little grass planes here, or little, little spike things over here, we're going to use those first. They're just an editable poly. They're a few polygons high, so that you could actually animate them a little bit if you wanted to. And they all, all of these objects have an X, X form applied to them. And I did that over here in Utilities, and I said Reset X form, selected the object, and hit Reset Selected. And what that did was it put an X form on top of it. I don't know if you have to do this for every object. These objects I'm using are a little bit older, and the X-form was messed up on them, and it just it works better. But I find you can get a hold of them in the scatter object a little bit better with the X-form. So I would try it the first time through with the X-form, and then you might want to try it without it, and you might have some luck. Okay. So we're going to scatter the grass, the grass plane to the... Path don't delete 01 piece. You can see it over here. And I'm going to add a whole bunch of operands. Um, we'll add 100 this time. Or did we add 300 last time? Let's add 300. Okay, let's add 300. It's a little easier to see. I'm going to make sure that I use area, which will distribute them a little bit more randomly. And now, this was the button I missed before. These, uh, under objects, you can see the distribution object. If I hop back over here to modify, the distribution object is now selected. What I want to do is select the grass object because I want to get down to that X form that I had added in the original scene. Well, now we can, you can see my grass is halfway through the, the dirt here, not what I want. So this is where we left off when I turned the recording off. Now we're going to go to Gizmo, and I can move the grass up in the scatter plane so that it matches the plane a little bit better. Very handy. All right. Now we're rolling. And don't worry about the texturing going on here. You'll see when I render this, that's not really what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to turn off Gizmo now, and I'm going to go back to Scatter. I need a lot more grass pieces, so I'm going to add about a thousand. And now, if we add any more, things are going to start to slow down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down here where it says display, and I'm just going to say to display 50%. Watch half of these disappear, but they're all still there. We're just displaying it. So let's do a quick render and see what we have to work with right now. You can see there's my grass. It's not looking great right now. We're going to make it look a little bit better, plus lighting will have a big difference in it. It doesn't look a lo real good until you get shadows in it, too, because you're seeing through to the underlying area. All right, and now I'm going to hop back up here and make some changes. Under duplicates, I'm going to put 3,000 and see what that looks like. See, this should see this fill in a lot better. Much better. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, and I'm going to go down to... You can change the scale, by the way, here. This will actually make everything smaller or bigger, so if you wanted shorter grass, you can make it smaller. I'm going to set the scale at 70% for the time being. The vertex chaos actually kind of bends the blades of grass a little bit, and that's why I put some polygons in them. So I'm going to put the vertex chaos at, at one's too much, how about 0.4? There we go. Perpendicular 
makes the grass planes grow out in um, as the normal of the polygon that they're on would face. So if you uncheck it, they go straight up in the air. If you check it, they get kind of wavy and um, grow out in different areas. So I'm going to check that. Now, as we scroll down here, we get into these transforms. They're usually folded up, so it usually looks like this. I'm going to click that. And under rotation, what I want to do is find the axis that's straight up and down. In this case, it's my Z axis. And I'm going to rotate all these guys 180 degrees. This randomly rotates them. And the rest of these I'm only going to rotate about 12 degrees because I don't want them to be too bent. It's just enough to randomize it. The local transform, I'm going to... No, nah, that's too much. I'm just going to type in a fairly low number in each of these so that it randomizes them a little bit more. That looks like it'll probably be pretty good. My rotations here are looking a little bit high. There we go. And I'm going to lower this a little bit. There we go. Translation on face. Again, we want to type in something just to randomize it a little bit. But don't, don't add too much. I think that'll probably work for us in this case see what we've got going there. That's looking pretty good. And under scaling, again, we want a fairly low number. And this is going to make it so all of our grass is a different um, width and height. You can, on the z-axis, which is the up and down axis, you can make this one a little bit higher. And it'll make some of the grass a little bit higher than some of the others. So just enough to randomize everything is what we're after. I think those numbers will work for what I'm after here. Okay, and we'll hit a display again, or a render again, just to see what we've got to work with. This is looking pretty good. I think I need some more grass, though. I still got some bald areas there. All right, we'll let that render through. Okay, I need some more grass, so that's up here under duplicates. I'm going to go up to 5,000. I think that'll work probably pretty well. Now, it's time to add a light into this scene so that we can get some shadows. So, I'm going to add a directional light. Now, we didn't cover directional lights before. I'm going to add a free direct light. I'm going to hop back out here to my four planes. Actually, I've already got a light. This is a directional light. It was made with free direct. So, there's our directional light. You can just drag this out and aim it at your scene. It looks like a big arrow with a big barrel around it. You may need to increase the, um, the hot spot and fall off on these so that they cover the whole area. Your free directional light, you'll want to make sure that shadows are on. Make the shadow maps advanced ray traced because these are alpha channeled objects. They actually have alpha channels and shadow maps won't work on the alpha channel. So we'll go with advanced ray traced. And under directional parameters, you'll need to make the hot spot and the fall off really big to cover the whole area. But otherwise, the directional will all come in one direction. Okay? Now, we're going to zoom... Whoa, zoomed in too far here. Zoom in a little bit. We'll render this to see what it looks like with our new light on it. You'll see that a lot of the ground now will be covered up with shadows, which is what we want, so that it will look a little bit thicker. There we go. And you can see those shadows are covering up the ground now, so it starts to look a little bit more like real grass. And you get the idea. I'm going to cut that render off so we don't have to wait for it. Okay, and now we're going to deal with that other plane object that we had. I'm going to select one of these plants in the scene. In this case, I'm going to select this little guy. 
And I'm going to make him a scatter object under Compound Objects, Scatter, pick Distribution Object, and in this case we're going to select the Path Delete 02 object. That was the one that didn't have as much selected around the path. And we'll need to do the whole process we just did over again. I'm not going to make as many of these because they're higher poly. In fact, that's probably even too many. How about 35? Remember, we're only displaying 50% of them. That'll probably work. And um, I'm going to zoom in here and see if I need to play with the X form on them to raise them up. It doesn't look like I do. It looks like they're all right. They're stuck to the ground. That's what I'm checking. If we did need to move them, we could go to Modify and click um, the Plant Object. Go to X Form, and you can move them up and down if you wanted to. But these look like they're going to be okay. And um, I'm going to scroll down here, hit Area, so they're a little more randomized. And I'm going to do the same thing under rotation that I did before. This time I'll just choose a large number like 160. And under these transforms, I'm going to type in a few small numbers just to randomize them a little bit. You'll see them move as I do that. And under scaling, I'm going to type in... I'm going to make them all in around, there we go. I think that will probably work pretty well. They're a little big. I think what I'm going to do is go up here and select my X form again and go down to Gizmo. And I'm just going to scale them down a little bit because they're a little bit big. There they go. Okay. I think that's probably pretty good. And under display, I'm going to check and make sure I have 50% because I don't want all of them displayed. The display doesn't cut down the render, the amount that are going to render. It just cuts down how many are displayed. It makes things move a little faster. Okay, I'm going to render this and see what I have. I should have some bigger plants now in my scene. There they are. A couple things while this is rendering that uh, we'll go over. You want to make sure that the materials you are used, if they're alpha channeled, like leaves might be, that you use ray trace shadows or you're going to get big blobby shadows that are the shape of the polygons that you uh, have your textures on. Only ray trace shadows will shine through alpha maps and look right. You also want to make sure that all your materials you're using are double sided because like those grass planes, if you spin them around and you look at the back, under normal circumstances they would be invisible and you want to be able to see them. So make sure they're double-sided and you do that in the material editor and there's a two-sided uh, checkbox right up at the top of your material. And you can see our little path now is clear. We've added foliage to the rest of our scene. The more a uh, plain object you make, the more things you can scatter. And when you're all done with this, if you want to, you can collapse the stack down, merge your vertices with um, vertex weld on a very, very low setting, and then all of your objects will be welded back into one, and all of your plant objects will be kind of stuck in place without a bunch of double vertices. So it's a nice way to work, and for your tank scene, you might consider adding some foliage right around the tank. Don't add too much foliage way back in the background, or you're gonna, your render times won't be very usable in the long run.